Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had uh, a nice tea. So it's going to be good to listen to this uh, wonderful talk of mine. Um, it has been quite a groundbreaking work. Um, we had to grapple with many things to come to where we are now, as you will realize when we, we go further. OK. Um, from Sunbi, as I've been introduced, um, I work with Mendy Driver in this type of work that uh, I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, we started doing this work uh, since 2013, uh, chopping and changing and doing lots of things uh, forward and also going backward. So you bear with me that this is quite a, a, a trial and error method that you are undertaking. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, just to give you a glimpse of what I'll be sharing with you, I'll just give you uh, the objectives of the study in question and trying to bring you some of the justification of the study or as to why we're asking these particular um, um, questions. Okay, I'll bring into question as well the issue of the methods that we've used in, in quantifying uh, or measuring the burden of serial employment and also share with you some of the results that we have managed to accumulate to date. Using the results, the burden of the employment results that we have acquired, we'll try to compare that with those of other conventional sectors of the economy in South Africa to see where we are in terms of uh, the, the numbers. And lastly, I'll just show you the way forward because uh, there's still work to be done in, in, in this project. Okay, um, it has been identified that uh, um, the contribution of South Africa's biodiversity assets and ecological infrastructure to economy and in particular to employment is not well quantified in South Africa. So what we are trying to do here is to try to um, uh, quantify uh, 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 the, the, the contribution of biodiversity to employment. And the few, the few studies that have been undertaken to date, mm -hmm. uh, most of them may not have been comprehensive enough. Some of them may focus on a single subsector of the uh, biodiversity economy. In other cases, they focus on few professions within the biodiversity sector. So, uh, but this study, we're trying to be as uh, compressive as possible, including the whole range of biodiversity-related employment, meaning that the scope will be much increased um, relative to the previous studies. Okay. Yeah, the two studies that I'm talking about as well, uh, they've not been systematic. Each, of, each, each, each study of uh, defined biodiversity-related employment in their own way. So what we're trying to do here is to try to bring up a, a standard approach or standard methodology in which we can use to measure biodiversity-related employment. So as we can be able to monitor uh, 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 the contribution of biodiversity to employment over a long period of time. Because the, the, the ones that are available, they're not really comparable. Um, they've used different scopes as well. They've used the different estimation methodologies, which is very difficult to compare them, even though there's quite a few in different subsectors, like your hunting, your game ranching. But because of the scope that they've used and definition of the bed of related employment, so it's quite difficult to compare those studies. So what we're trying to do is just to bring something which um, can be standardized and used in a very uh, long term. Okay. After we've sort of come up with a method in which we can base our, 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 our assessment on, so we'll just try to give you a little bit of what we've managed to accumulate in terms of results. Um, this, this will serve as an initial assessment of the biodiversity related employment in South Africa. So it should serve as a baseline going forward. Okay. In our attempt to um, quantify the contribution of biodiversity um, to the employment. We first had to define uh, biodiversity economy. And this, the definition that you're seeing on screen is the definition that um, has been adopted from WWF. The biodiversity economy strategy as well of South Africa is sort of uh, also adopted this particular definition. And this is the definition that we're also uh, comfortable with. So after some um, initial soul searching, we also um, um, sort of adopted it as well. Okay, that was the first step. The second step was to identify the uh, biodiversity related economic sectors associated with uh, the biodiversity economy in question. So we were able to identify um, quite a number of uh, uh, biodiversity economic subsectors, including ecotourism, your uh, floriculture, 
your two production in terms of um, Honey Bush and, and, and Roy Boss and so on. So those written in your screen are just some of the examples that we are managed to identify. Okay. And then that's on its own. After we have identified the, the, the economic subsectors of the biodiversity, then we came up with the definition of uh, biodiversity related employment. And the definition that you're seeing there um, is some that we've uh, sort of adapted from the, the European Union study, um, which I can't recall the name right now. Um, so we have adopted uh, that particular definition, which is an employment sector that relies on the activities of conservation, restoration, and ut utilization of biodiversity assets and resources. From this definition, it's crystal clear that you find, um, you can actually identify two main broad categories of biodiversity employment. Those that are concerned, number one, those that are concerned with uh, the conservation of biodiversity and those that are concerned with the uh, actual utilization of biodiversity. Okay? That has been covered. Yeah. For, for, for those jobs that are concerned with the conservation of biodiversity, which is uh, the first category, you tend to have um, um, the subcategory in that particular category, which deals with the production and man management of bi uh, biodiversity assets. This um, can be your, your provincial conservation agencies um, your, uh, your, and several other NGOs that are involved in the protection and management of biodiversity. So I'm just giving an example there. Okay, and there are those jobs as well, um, which is um, the second subsector in that category that deals with the maintenance and restoration of critical infrastructure. Your DS NRM program falls there. Uh, the role of other uh, NGOs that um, restores our degraded ecosystem falls there. Your land care programs, for example, um, your agricultural work, so it falls under that category. Okay, there's also those that deals with the information generation and your info generation, your management and distribution. This can be your museums, your botanical gardens, your universities and colleges uh, that sort of uh, provide this information that we need in order to conserve our biodiversity. Okay, moving on to the second category, which is just more with the uh, use of biodiversity. We've got the non conservative use of uh, biodiversity. Mostly those are things uh, related to ecotourism and many, many other things that are not really involved in direct use, but are the, they are not com conservative. Okay. The fifth uh, subcategory uh, has got uh, something to do with extractive use of biodiversity. Obviously, this they really extract our biodiversity. This can be your hunting, your 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 wild harvesting of flowers, and so on. Okay. Ideally, we wanted to only include those um, um, subsectors of the biodiversity economy that does not really impact much on, on our biodiversity or that are uh, involved in sustainable utilization. So we have had to exclude things like your, your aquaculture because we believe that that's not really a, a, a sustainable way of harvesting uh, your biodiversity. And we also excluded many, many other things that we thought are not really sustainable, so as to speak. Okay, um, sorry. Okay, this is the framework upon which uh, 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 we're able to identify and classify our biodiversity related uh, uh, employment. And this is the same framework that we're going to use to sort of base our measurement of biodiversity related employment. So um, we're going to use all this uh, conceptual framework and populate uh, the information. And then we, in order for us to, to get the data, we use three approaches. Um, the first one was um, administrative data. We went about going to uh, website of various conservation agencies, various provincial uh, government agencies, and so on, to try and access things like the annual report. Most of these are already available on the website. So we had just to extract the annual reports of the years in which we're interested in. And then from there, on each and every, or oh, actually on most of the annual reports, you can easily find statistics on, 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 on human resources. They'll tell you they've got X number of employees and the, in certain program of work and X number of employees in other programs of work. So 
we had to, to, to go there. This administrative data was also supplemented by emails and phone calls to various um, organizations that we've identified trying to get this information if you couldn't find them on the website. So yeah, it's, it's a whole long process. I'll be ready to answer questions if you ask more questions on that because it's, it's a whole process that we went through. So we separated different organizations according to their roles and responsibilities and, and tried to see if, if say it's such an organization was commanded was purely biodiversity. We we'll just take all the, the jobs in that particular field. But if such an organization has got some element of biodiversity functions, but they are not really focusing on biodiversity conservation, we we'll just take some of the jobs, for example. So yeah, that's, that's some of the methodology that we have used. Okay. And we, we on, on our administrative data, we managed to get data mostly for category A. Uh, uh, employment, those dealing with the conservation and management of biodiversity. So the, the method that we have adopted is existing sector estimates. For things like game ranching, your robusty, your fisheries, you'll find some studies that have sort of quantified the contribution of, of that particular subsector to employment. Some are peer-reviewed uh, papers and researches. Some are not so peer reviewed, so it's uh, the sector itself trying to promote itself. So, uh, yeah, we're not sure um, how to go about that, but we used all the great literature and the peer reviewed literature. literature. And for these uh, sub um, sectors, we took all the jobs across the value chain uh, of that particular sector. If it's game ranging, we took jobs ranging, ranging from um, uh, from accommodation, you text demi, and everything that involved in that particular um, uh, value chain of the industry. We also used um, the national service data, um, which is the quarterly labor force survey um, obtained from StatSA. They normally do these surveys um, every quarter where they go to um, 30,000 households and they interview them on the, um, whether they're working and what type of job they're involved in and so on. So we extracted that data. Uh, and then we used industry codes and, 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 and occupation codes. But due to the fact that biodiversity employment is not found in a particular industry, it's scattered across various um, industries, we have had to use some proportions. And then we use definitions of the industry codes or occupation codes to try and identify the proportions uh, in which we can identify uh, or find biodiversity jobs in that field. Let's say if we say an industry like um, um, hunting and um, game trapping, so we, we realize that yeah, maybe you can find more jobs in biodiversity, as biodiversity related. We said 85% of those, because they may include other things that may not necessarily be biodiversity. We said 85% of those, we regard them as biodiversity related, and so on. So um, for those that we're not sure, we said 40%. And for those that we know that there are quite a few, we said 3.5% as the proportion. So it's quite a thumb sucking exercise. And, and, and we will be able to, to, to get advice on that going forward. Okay. The table that you're seeing on your screen, just a little bit summarizing um, um, how each and every um, approach that we've adopted or the method that we've adopted uh, was able to get us some results. For category a employment, which are those employment um, having something to do with the conservation of biodiversity, w using the annual data and the data is explained earlier, we were able to get 61,000 jobs across um, subcategory A to 3. Okay. On existing sector estimate, um, I think we identified quite a few um, subsectors here, but we were able to get 249,000 jobs. Uh, particularly on extractive use of, of, of biodiversity. On non-consumptive use, we were not able to get um, data using the administrative data and existing sector estimates, but the QLFs data by industry, for example, um, made us to, 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 to acquire some of the data there. So this 
um, table just shows you how, uh, how different methodologies that we have adopted is able to pick um, different type of um, data per uh, subsector. And we initially thought that these are mutually exclusive um, approaches. But the way it's showing there, it's indicating to us that this may not be um, an exclusive alternatives, but uh, that there might be uh, sort of complementary in a way. Because we know that we didn't get anything from ecotourism, for example, uh, using the administrative data and exiting sector estimates. But using the qualifiers data, we're able to get something. So that enables us to sort of um, rethink uh, what we initially had. Okay. Yeah, just to indicate that uh, the QFS data that we're talking about picked up employment um, in, 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 in keeping sites, hotels, short stay accommodation, just to give you an, an idea of, of, of what we picked up there. Okay. This is just another way of, of, of showing to you how the different uh, three approaches have fed in terms of acquiring um, the data that we're looking for. But if you can have a look at, at, at the last bunch of, uh, of bars in the graph, they indicate to you that uh, the existing sector estimate in a way uh, uh, managed to locate uh, lots of um, biodiversity related employment and, and, and that ad, um, administrative data as well uh, um, sort of was the least uh, uh, method that uh, captured some um, body of the related employment. But the QLFS data as well, because it was able to, 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 to get that employment across all the two categories. It shows that it also did well there, okay? The initial overall estimate, like I said, Using our confidence level on the data and the certainty that we have, we said um, on category A, which is A1, A2, A3, we're confident that the demonstrative data gave us the perfect results there. Because um, we didn't do lots of um, proportions and stuff, so we're quite confident in that data. And then we said we're taking that as our best estimate going forward. For, the, for category B, uh, using existing sector estimates like those um, that on game branching, for example, that the, the EWT study um, said it's got around 65. So we took those things and we got uh, confidence on, on, on this type of, 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 of data and also taking that as um, 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 employment for category B. Because we didn't get the estimate for the sector on, 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 on B4, we sort of took the QLFS data by industry and added it up and to find that we've got 397,000 biodiversity-related jobs in South Africa. But as, as I said, we've got some reservations in, in, in other ways. But anyway, um, what was interesting to find there was that um, the ratio of category A jobs to category B jobs is 1 to 5, meaning that for every job, dedicated to conserving biodiversity, there are more than five jobs that depend directly on biodiversity, meaning that maybe we need to keep uh, or to invest more resources in the conservation of biodiversity because that will increase the potential of, of uh, category B um, uh, employment to, 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 to increase. Okay? Just uh, comparing our results with that of the other sectors like your mining and agriculture and so on, the least one there that completed the least jobs in terms of the conventional sectors of the economy was mining, which uh, produced 428,000 jobs in the year 2014. And our, our assessment, because we regarded it as a 2014 assessment, it produced 197 jobs and saying, we're not that far away from what the mining sector is contributing. So, um, and we were quite confident that this was just a low um, um, bound estimate, and we know that if you can correct some of the things, we can be doing much better than mining, and that pleases me a lot. Okay, uh, we still have to do, to sort out many things, because we identified some of the subsectors, but we could not get the estimate. In the other cases, we may have uh, missed other subsectors of the economy, so we may need help with that. Um, on the proportions with the QLFS data, we still have to sort out the thing of proportions, as I've already said, 
because uh, this thing of saying using the blanket system of saying 80 percent everywhere maybe we need somebody to understand each industry or each occupation then they can tell us the actual proportions that we are maybe related to to biodiversity just to say that um this work is going to feed in, into the national biodiversity assessment which is going to be released in 2018 so um, we've developed this, um, the number of biodiversity related employment as an indicator, headline indicator, uh, just to indicate the, um, as a headline indicator to indicate uh, um, um, the importance or the benefit of, 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 of biodiversity in terms of employment. So going forward, this will feature more. And like I said, uh, the standardized methodology will help us to track these um, particular numbers over a period of time because that's the main purpose is to standardize. Thank you.